Right, so what's the difference between hardwood and softwood? Now the obvious thing we would say is, oh, hardwoods are hard and softwoods are soft. Um, not necessarily. There are some hardwoods that are soft and there are some softwoods that are harder than some hardwoods. So it's really hard to say. It really for, refers to the, how the tree grows and uh, more than anything. Um, hardwoods are trees that have leaves and the leaves fall off in, in the autumn so that the snow doesn't overburden the tree and break branches and then it grows new, new, uh, new leaves in the springtime. During the wintertime the sap in the tree goes down into the roots uh, keeping everything alive so in the spring it can all be in a sense reborn. Softwood doesn't do that. Softwood has needles of some sort or another. They aren't all the same kind but those allow the tree to shed snow much, much easier. And so the, the weight of the snow isn't really an issue. And so they maintain themselves live, or we say evergreen, year round, okay? Now, while most hardwoods are harder than softwoods, that doesn't mean that all are, okay? The reason they're harder is because the tree grows slower. And because it grows slower, you end up with a denser wood. There's a huge difference in the, the life or I should say the growth cycle of softwood trees and hardwood trees. A softwood tree can grow to the point of harvesting in about 40 years, whereas a hardwood tree is going to take about 150, okay? Much slower growth. Of course, it's not growing the whole year, right? So uh, some of the most common softwoods are pine, and it's various different types. There's a lot of different kinds of pine. Cedar and redwood, you know, the great redwoods in California, which we really don't use anymore. Um, so those are some of the common softwoods. Hardwoods, on the other hand, uh, can consist of things like walnut, mahogany, uh, birch, oak, maple, cherry. There's a slew of them, okay? There's one website I know that sells something like 90 different varieties of hardwoods, and that's the most I've ever found on one particular website. There's a lot of different ones. They have different colors, they have different grain patterns, they have different densities, all right? But on the other hand, balsa, which is considered a hardwood because of the way the tree grows, is actually the softest wood in existence. It's so soft that it's used for model making, it's normally cut with a hobby knife, okay? Go figure. Yew, which grows in England, and as far as I know, it's the only place it grows, is a softwood. It's a kind of a creamy brown, light brown color, something like chestnut or hickory, and uh, yet it's harder than maple, oak, or walnut, woods that are common hardwoods here in the United States. So what can I say? You know, you can't really count on those names. They really are just a way of classifying. How hard the wood is depends on the individual wood species itself. So speaking of wood density, the wood's hardness or density is measured on what's called the Janka scale. Now, somebody in Australia came up with a system and they take a steel ball, which is 0.444 inches in diameter, and press it in the surface of the wood. And uh, the, the amount of pressure that it takes, in, measured in pounds, to get that ball halfway into the wood is the Janka hardness of that wood, okay? Uh, for example, this piece of oak is probably, this is red oak, which is softer than, than white oak. This has probably got a Janka hardness somewhere in the range of 1,200, okay? There's a piece down here of purple heart that's harder than that. Uh, this is a piece of pine. It probably has a, a, a hardness of somewhere between 600 and 900. Oh, okay, so what do these numbers do for us? What good are they? Well, it's more of a reference than is anything else because the numbers are relative to each other. And uh, really where they come in useful is you're, if you're planning a project and you want to pick out wood to use for that project, okay, fine. If you're going to use multiple types of wood in the project, it's best to use woods that have Janka hardnesses that are at least close to each other. I tried building a chessboard once, and I was using uh, <clears throat> ebony for one of the woods, which is probably one of the hardest woods there is. And the other wood for the white, I was using lace wood, which is nearly white colored. Uh, but its hardness is down around there where pine is. Well, when I tried to plane the, it to level it out, it essentially self-destructed because it took so much pressure to get the plane to go through the hard ebony that the, it, the pressure literally broke the softer lacewood. Okay, so 
that's an example of why you may not want to use woods with a vastly different Janka hardness. Another thing that Janka hardness is in effect is the difficulty of cutting it. Now, obviously, sharp tools help cut it better, okay? But actually, sharp tools are most important when you're cutting really soft woods like pine because if your wood is, if your, if your blade is not sharp enough, it's going to tear. You're going to get a lot of tear out on the back side. Uh, and that, that's with a router, that's with a saw, or whatever, rather than getting a clean cut. But if you're cutting a really hard wood, like going back to that ebony or this purple heart I've got hit sitting here, you're going to have to expect it's going to take more work to get through it. Okay. Another unique characteristic that's different about them is that there's no such thing as a dark colored softwood. Softwoods tend to be creamy colored, you know, like the pine or, or even this oak, which is not a softwood. Uh, they tend to be light colored like that. You might get a few that are, are a little bit darker, uh, maybe a light brown, like a caramel sort of a color. But if you want the dark woods, like this walnut, you need to go for hardwood. Generally speaking, softwoods are easier to work. Now, new woodworkers generally start off working mostly with softwoods. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, it's easier to cut. And the other is it's a whole lot less expensive. You know, you can go to your regular lumber yard and you can buy, or your home improvement center and buy uh, just what's known as construction grade lumber, two by fours, one by fours, whatever, cut it up and make projects out of it. And that's great. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You're ne certainly not going to make fine furniture that way, uh, but it's going to give you projects that are usable and it's going to give you practice in woodworking. And it's going to be enjoyable. That's great. All right. But as you progress, you know, and you want to make something a little fancier, you suddenly find yourself faced with a thing of, oh, gee, I need some hardwoods. All right, well, where do you get your hardwoods? Well, it depends on where you live. For most of us, there probably isn't a hardwood supplier or a lumberyard that carries a lot of hardwood nearby. I live in a small town, uh, and here in my small town, our local hardware store carries no hardwoods whatsoever. Uh, does carry some dimensional lumber. I can buy dimensional lumber there and it's decent quality lumber. My next closest choice is to go to Builder Square. I'm sorry, Home Depot. Builder Square doesn't exist anymore. Home Depot, which is 20 miles away. And I can get a good selection of softwoods there. Uh, I can get some cedar there, which is a softwood. Uh, I can get uh, oak and I can get poplar. Those are the only two hardwoods that they have. Uh, and that's actually not real good prices for it. Uh, if you look at the board foot price of that, it's a bit high. So. What do I end up doing? I end up buying it online and having it shipped in. That gets expensive. So when I do, I get a bunch shipped in so I have enough to last a while. But you're also talking about the issue of, hey, this stuff costs money. I want to make sure I get my money's worth out of it. I want to make sure I get good use out of it when I do buy it. So that, that's something to consider. Another, you know, if you live within a driving distance of a city that has a hardwood supplier, uh, like I live 150 miles from San Antonio, and San Antonio does have some, some hardwood suppliers there. So I could take a Saturday and drive up there and buy uh, you know, a, a truckload or a, I don't have a truck, I have an SUV, load of hardwood lumber and drive it back home. That's a, a lot of expenditure at one time, but it's probably worth doing because I saved the shipping. Okay, So that's one of the, the things that we have to deal with when we want to get, get into getting into better wood and working with hardwood. Um, Again, it really depends on what it is you're trying to build and, and your personal preference and, of course, your budget. Okay, um, As I said with the low density, with the, the pine and the other softer woods, the soft woods in general, they tend to be sappy. And that sap tends to get, get on our bits and our blades and it can get sticky and it can be really hard to be removed. Uh, it is possible to remove it. You can clean it off, but, and you do need to clean it off because otherwise it interferes with the cutting. So, yes, it's easier to cut softwoods. It's a good place to start. It's low cost. But at some point, yeah, you're probably going to want to upgrade and go to hardwoods.